Welcome to Cooking with Coach. I'm a big tacos fan, so I did some turkey tacos. One thing you gotta realize when you're cooking, just like in life, you know, you might have a recipe in front of you, but you gotta add in your own flavor. So I really don't read, I just go with my heart and my spirit and I add things that's gonna make it make it taste right for me and I, I love to see people smile. And I like to see my wife and my kids smile when they eat these foods. So we're gonna keep a little color in here. We got a little fresh pico de gallo here. Look at that boys coming together. Everybody gotta have a little cilantro. We always gotta have a little cilantro. And I like cilantro, so I'm a little heavy handed when it comes to cilantro. Oh, fresh lime. You gotta have that lime to help, that acid helps to take down that, break down the spice. I like iceberg lettuce for this one. You know, sometimes I may use romaine or butter for this one. I like a little iceberg. Always gotta top it off with a little Mexican style cheese. Man, look at that, who, who is coming together, I tell you. Boy, think about my mouth is starting to water just thinking about it. I got to, y'all don't mind me. Just gotta put this thing in. <laughs> Signature cocktail. I call this the Margagini. Fresh mint leaves. A little lime, salt in the rim. Refreshing, I tell you. Welcome to A Seat at the Table, guys. I am Demi Howe, and today we're gonna to be talking about expectations in marriage. So, of course, when we think about expectations in a marriage, it's like, where does that thought even come from? Are we picking up maybe what we've seen our parents do? Um, or is it what society does? Or do you have a fictitious thought in your mind of what you think your expectations should be from your partner? So, today we're gonna to get into expectations, the proposal, the I do, the aftermath, and did it go the way that you thought it should go. So you guys come on over and have a seat with us at the table. Welcome to a seat at the table, and today we are talking about expectations. <laughs> well, why are you looking like that? Us. That's what we're talking about. I mean, we're here, so I just wanted to let you know that that's what we were, we were talking about expectations today. Okay. Did you have expectations on me? Were we? Not really. He said, not really. <laughs> so you just married, you just asked was, me to I marry so, you without happy. expecting I so anything? I was so happy in the moment, I just knew everything was going to be right. So I assumed. And I was, you know, throughout the rough times, it ended up getting my results that I wanted. Okay. Which was what? Happiness. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that was the only thing. The it's really kind of vague. Yeah, so that's there. the only thing you wanted was happiness. I mean, no, actually, no, no. All jokes aside, <clears throat> I, I I wanted to be with someone that was gonna get the most out of me. You know, mm. I, I I didn't come from a situation where I knew how to get the most out of me, and um, you know, I was fortunate enough to you know that you chose me. And that was like your goal from day one because you knew the only way to be the best version of yourself was to have someone that was gonna be the best version of their sales. And so, I mean, ultimately that was truly the expectations, not for you, but more so for myself. Mm. So it sounds like you said I was perfect. <laughs> to me, yes. Aww. Okay. Brownie points, brownie points, <laughs> brownie points, y'all. Um, yeah, I, you know, I can't, I will have to agree with you as far as the expectations. I really didn't have any. I just knew that everything that I wanted and prayed for, you were doing those things. So, you know, when you kind of fall into that scenario, it's like in your mind, your mental, you're thinking, okay, things are gonna fall in place because this person is kind of doing everything and you, you really kind of live in, in a false reality. Yeah. But it really wasn't until we went on the date that night that we had the deep conversation and you were saying, all the things you want to do, like with sports management mm -hmm. and being an agent and managing people. And so once we had that conversation, then I kind of felt like, okay, I can really see where you want to take your life to. Yeah, okay, so I got that. So okay. let's, let's get to, let's get a look at the real meat of the situation. So we, we, we're in this scenario, we're in this happy land right now. Oh wow, this is what this guy wants to be. Then we get into the real relationship. And now that we're in this real relationship, different responsibilities come in and it kind of, you know, jumbles things up mm -hmm. mentally. Mm -hmm. Where was your head at that point 
once you, you realize that the dude has a vision, but hell, he ain't going towards it. Uh, I felt like you was a fraud. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I, I have to be brutally honest. I just felt like, but that goes back to uh, this fairy tale thing because when you're young, you're dating, like. You, you really don't know, you know what I'm saying? You looking at your parents, you looking at TV, you looking at society, so you can cop this whole scenario out in your mind, but you really don't get over that phase until you evolve within yourself. You know what I'm saying? So I still had to do more evolving and, and really understanding, because you know how I am. I'm just, I'm a very matter of fact type of person. Now I'm less, Matter of fact, now than I used to be back then. So I did, you know, you don't know. You, well, I mean, you, you really were super don't. independent at the same time. But then know. you gotta understand, I'm coming in marrying a man that's like five to six years older than me too. So. I mean, what that mean? He was a lot older. We're not even gonna go into that story, but he is a lot older. But what I'm saying, no, but honestly, no. What I'm saying is, if you're a younger woman and you're dating an older man. Your expect expectations is yeah. already like, okay, this this man is older, so it's certain things you think should be already in place, yeah. and that's not for yeah, real. Yeah, but it was just literally, you know, age literally can be just a number most of the time. Yes. You know, because you know what you didn't know was that I really didn't start, you know, say spreading my wings mm -hmm. until I was a freshman in college. Right. You know, 18 years old, um, versus you leaving home at 17 and starting your life without anybody giving you any rules or regulations. So, you know, you actually were further ahead than I was at that point. And yeah. you know, I was just really starting to have fun mm -hmm. at that point, you know, but I'm glad that it happened when it did because I could have easily been 35 year old man. Correct. And still not knowing, mm -hmm. you know, how to compartmentalize all these things that I have in my head that are great into something that can lead to something even better. Mm -hmm. um, so. That's why I say the expectations were really upon me because I didn't know where I was going in life. I knew what I wanted to do, but I didn't know how to do it. I just didn't know how to do it. And you were, you know, just from those times of sitting around watching you work and watching your determination and the fact that no matter what we did, you were still at work mm -hmm. the next day. I was really taught to do that. I just, I didn't want to go, I didn't go. Yeah. So, you know, you taught me, you taught me the self-responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know, and which heightened my expectations for myself. Mm -hmm. Because now I felt like, man, if I don't at least ramp up to where she is, how can I be mm -hmm. with her? Mm -hmm. You know, and I fell off, you know, throughout the years, over the 20 years, I fell off, but that, that those falls were not because of you. They were because of me, because instead of me admitting that I was in a space that I didn't know, I let my ego and my pride get in the way, and I was just gonna be the man, and just, yeah. you were just supposed to overlook the fact that I was not being as much of a man as I should have been. Mm -hmm. You know, a real man understand that sometimes you gotta admit to your mistakes. Yeah, um, uh, but I, yeah, I, I, I get that. I also think during that time, in that phase, I just knew that I had to push you. Like, I've always been a pusher. Yeah. And that one defining moment let me know like, okay, this, this person needs a little push and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, especially now as I've gotten older and just kind of have a better understanding of myself and myself first and then you because I can't understand you without understanding me. Mm -hmm. I feel like that is what ultimately made me push you like, okay, you need to do this, this, and this. Let's let's work on this, this, and this. Yeah, it was frustrating. It was plenty of times where I was just over it and frustrating, but at the end of the day, like you're my best friend. So Period. with that being said, with the being the best friend, so do you honestly believe that we're here now, you know, 2021, just had our 20 year anniversary because for those first eight months that we were together, we made sure that we were friends first. Absolutely. And I'm talking about friends before love. Oh, absolutely. That That's the foundation. That is the foundation. It, it's, it's a friendship. It wasn't about money. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about sex. It wasn't about nothing but a friendship. We yep. had a very strong friendship first. Mm -hmm. And that is what has maintained it, period. Because yeah, I, I honestly believe we, you know, if we hadn't have been, you know, compatible on those levels. Mm -hmm. I still think we'd still be friends now, 21 years later. Oh yeah, we'd be friends, divorce friends, and you'd be my neighbor. <laughs> You're gonna be my neighbor. You'll be my neighbor. So, 
Um, I, I really think when it comes to expectations, and I just got through listening to someone that said, um, don't expect anything from anybody. Mm -hmm. And I kind of thought about that thing, but it confused me because it's like, if I'm not expecting anything out of you, and we're in this thing together as a partnership, it's like, what am I doing? That yeah. mean, hell, I'm just focusing on what I'm doing. And it's like, I don't need, whatever you're doing don't need. matter. Mm -hmm. So there, that to me is a disconnect when it comes to relationships. Like True. there has to be expectation that whether the expectations are met yeah. and whether your expectations are something that's beyond reach, that, that you know, that's, 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 but, a, but, that's but a thin line. I also feel like that you should have uh, the ability to adjust. Absolutely. You know, you can't make expectations and then that's the only that's the only focus you got to have the opportunity mm -hmm. to say you know we might need to shift a little bit here yeah. shift a little bit there and then let's try to meet in the middle and make it work in another way yes i love that mm -hmm. come on folks so <laughs> there you have it thank you guys for tuning in to a seat at the table with brandy and demi we hope you guys got a lot of this episode um and the, the one last question i want to ask you guys is did you get what you expected?